the old weathered stone of a English country home. Now, I don't know anything more romantic than sitting beside a stream and watching the sun pour through the landscape, especially with that beautiful weathered English stone. That stone starts out being quarried in the hillside surrounding the little country villages of England, and it's the year after year of sun and mist and rain that gives it that wonderful character. I'm Thomas Kincaid, and I'd like to welcome you to my newest painting, which is called Lamplight Manor. Now, I began this series years ago. In fact, it was kind of interesting. On my first trip to England, I painted on location in a number of the little villages in the Cotswolds. Now, I'm a kid who grew up in California, and I'll tell you, anything 50 years old or more is considered a state historic landmark. But you go to England, and things are centuries old, maybe even thousands of years old. Now, just think of that. Imagine stepping into a cottage, as I did, that was built over a thousand years ago. Now, many people know of my background as an artist and as a person, because my family really came over from Britain. It hails from Ireland, Scotland, and England. And we have a lot of roots in the United Kingdom. And for me, that has always been, I think, part of the allure of taking a trip overseas. It gives me a chance to rediscover my roots. Uh, even though I don't have the English accent, I certainly have an English accent in my heart. Now, my first painting in the Lamplight series was entitled Lamplight Lane. That painting began as an on-location painting where I set up my easel right beside the little stream in a village called Lower Slaughter. Now, when I first worked on that painting, I had no intention of taking it back to the studio. It was simply an impressionist painting to document the area that I was visiting. Well, I took it back to my studio and I finished it up as Lamplight Lane. Now, following that, we went into Lamplight Brook, Lamplight Inn, Lamplight Village, Lamplight Bridge. Now, many of these paintings were paintings done on location that I then took back to my studio and finished up. Now, you can imagine the memories I have. I remember sitting along the streams of a little village, looking out over the way of life of a beautiful English hamlet. As I worked on it, I was thinking, how can I document different elements of the English village? The old stone bridges, the sense of the cottages all gathered around, even the sense of sunlight as it breaks through the clouds and lights up a village day. When I started work on this painting, I remembered thinking to myself, there's got to be a way to create intimacy, even though you have the grand country home setting. Now, the country home concept uh, is not unique to England, but it was truly an expression of aristocracy throughout Europe. People of wealth, people of power, who would make their statement, as it were, by building these grand country homes. I find it wonderful to explore these homes because many of them are public places now, and you can visit them and wander through the gardens and sense what it would be like to live that opulent, aristocratic existence. Most people who grew up in a simple environment would kind of look up with awe at those buildings. So I wanted to find a way to make the building accessible, make it warm, make it comfortable. It's one of the things that I really enjoyed was the sense of the rounded turret that you would see on so many of those homes. Now, I've always thought that was kind of a neat touch. And this is, I think, the first manor house that I've painted that really features that grand sense of a round turreted structure. I also enjoyed painting the light within the house. To me, this was one of the ways to break down that austere barrier and make it intimate, make it feel as though you would want to enter in to that beautiful country home. I love using the element of pathways as a way to invite exploring the painting. This painting, more than just about any I've ever done, suggests to me a specific journey, a specific way of entering the painting. If you notice, we have the little boat tethered to the landing that is along the rock wall. And in my mind, I pictured getting on that little skiff and rowing to the rock landing and walking up those old weathered steps and going up to the manor house. Then, if I wish, I could explore down the little side paths that you see. The journey would also take you to the little gazebo that we have on the side there. That's an old stone gazebo with the 
wrought iron top, very common in the English countryside. I've used similar gazebos in my series, The Garden of Prayer. I love painting stone structures, but to me, when I see an old stone structure of any sort, especially a bridge, I envision the climbing rose, the old ancient rose bushes that seem to climb forever and decorate almost every rock wall in England. And of course, on this one, I had fun putting the climbing rose that you see going across the bridge from both sides. And in addition to that, I began to develop all sorts of flowering shrubs that lined the stream. I love to put the colors of the shrubs reflecting ever so delicately into the water. Speaking of reflections, there's nothing more fun than painting light as it dances across the surface of water. Now, I couldn't resist lighting up that beautiful country home and then letting that light shine, so to speak, on the foreground and on the water. It makes the whole composition appear to glow. Of course, the series is called Lamplight Lane, and I had to put the lamplights in. And in this composition, you'll see the beautiful old lamp posts that line the paths. Really, a way to welcome each of us into this beautiful country home. Of course, some of the fun details that I always put in my paintings are tributes to my family. Now, I have four daughters, and each daughter sort of rotates their chance into the painting. And it was Merritt's turn, so her name appears on the little red skiff that's tied up to the landing there beside the rock wall. I also enjoyed putting my wife's initial emblazoned several places around the manor house, a total of eight hidden ends for those of you who love to look for those hidden details. I was thinking about a painting I did called The Bridge of Faith, and I remember exploring light burning through the foliage. And if you see there on the right of the painting, you see the light pouring through the trees. That's a beautiful effect if you've ever had that experience of walking through a forest and seeing the shafts of light pouring through the trees. It's almost as though God's glory is pouring down over the landscape. So I think of this as almost a mansion of heaven, the kind of place in paradise that each of us would long to go. In fact, I put the old Celtic cross emblazoned on the stone wall as a symbol of faith, faith that will get us through difficult times and give us a glimpse of paradise. Well, I hope you've enjoyed a brief tour of my latest painting. I really think daily about uh, all the people who send me letters and contact us. Uh, and if you'd like to ever send us an email, be sure to visit our website at thomaskincade.com. Uh, we love to hear from all our collectors, and I must say, it keeps getting better. I keep feeling more of the sense that God has a purpose for these paintings, people whose lives are touched in some way, brightening the dark corners of our lives. This is Thomas Kincaid thanking you for sharing the light. <laughs>